and the gift of news just for you. Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm David Tennant. In the news this week, in Westminster, the government denies that its pledge to build 300,000 new homes is slightly behind schedule. <laughs> in Lapland, a group of disappointed children find out why they've all been given three-volume biographies of Karl Marx. <laughs> And on her first day working at a Christmas tree farm in Scotland, there's evidence one intern still has a lot to learn. <laughs> <laughs> on Ian's team tonight is a comedian who recently made a film about his quest to find the UK's largest Scotch egg. Not quite up there with The Last Jedi, but a noble effort. Please welcome Joe Wilkinson. <laughs> And with Paul tonight is Labour's Shadow Education Secretary, who admits that she's done pretty well for a ginger kid with no qualifications who grew up on an estate. Yeah, almost as well as Prince Harry. Please welcome Angela Rayner MP. <laughs> we start with the bigger stories of the week. Ian and Joe, take a look at this. Uh, that was Prime Minister at time of going out. <laughs> uh, that's David Davis trying to negotiate a step. Right, and this is um, subtle negotiations. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, she's amused too. That's one of the rebels. This is Brexit again. Yes. And there was a rebellion, and Mrs May lost, and David Davis made some admissions. The one I liked was that you don't have to be clever to do his job. <laughs> We'd noticed. <laughs> He's yes. as thick, isn't he? <laughs> he is, isn't he? Is he? <laughs> He's not my first choice. There you go. No. Is he not? Um, then nor was Jeremy, was he? <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just saying. <laughs> Wasn't there scrapping as well? Didn't the cabinet start fighting each other this week, apparently? Ooh, do tell. Mm. Well, <laughs> apparently there was quite the fight on and Theresa May had to split up some of her cabinet well, literally, colleagues. Well, physically wade in and go, leave it here. <laughs> Theresa May, is she here? <laughs> <laughs> is she here? I heard her voice. Is she here? <laughs> That's her real voice. She just puts on that vicar's daughter thing. Absolutely. <laughs> what were the Tory rebels after? They were after Parliament having a final vote on Brexit. Yes. On the idea that the referendum was in taking back control, so the, the Parliament was meant to make the laws. Even for Brexit, this is dull, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> It's about taking back control. And previously, we'd taken back control of our country and given it to um, ten people in Northern Ireland. Mm. Uh, <laughs> we're now giving it back to Parliament. To, to you. Yes. What happened? Was it thrilling? Well, it felt brilliant. I've been there two and a half years and it's the first time I'd seen them looking absolutely miserable, so it felt fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm honest. I like democracy. <laughs> Is it good when you're winning? I know it's new, but... <laughs> the, the amendment itself is relatively non-partisan, but how did the Daily Mail describe the 11 Tory rebels? The headline said, Proud of yourself. It did. As though yes. they were the headmaster and they'd just <laughs> found some children smoking. <laughs> this was the front page you were referring to. That's the worst team West Ham have ever put out. <laughs> What did uh, Tory MP Nadine Doris think of the rebels in her party? 
Well, she got quite nasty, didn't she? Mm. she they, they were very vicious. What I think she, she was calling for deselections, apparently. That's, she she was. She was furious. Trying to deselect people. That's, she'll join Momentum next. <laughs> <laughs> she tweeted, he should be deselected and never allowed to stand as a Tory MP ever again. <laughs> Which is interesting, because Nadine herself has rebelled against her party 47 times. <laughs> Didn't Nadine go in the forest as well? Did she, she, she went in I'm a Celebrity, didn't she? She did, didn't yeah. she? Is it a forest? I thought it was well, a jungle. jungle, yeah. <laughs> a bit green. It's, it's, if, if, you're, if you're a B-list celebrity, you go into the forest. If you're an A-list, it's the jungle. If you're C-list, it's a thicket. <laughs> Angela, do you think there'll come a time when, uh, when Jeremy Corbyn will say anything about what he thinks about Brexit? <laughs> Absolutely clear of our Brexit position. Has he though? <laughs> yeah. What is it then? Spell it out for us. <laughs> we want a strong economy with good jobs. Yes. That's what everybody wants. No, that's from an Brexit. aspiration. That's not a policy. Well, <laughs> we want to be closely aligned to the single market and the customs union. Yes. Do you want to be in them? We've not said we wanted to be in them necessarily. I know what you've not said. <laughs> We've been absolutely clear. Absolutely Do you? clear. In fact, in fact we've, been, we've, been, we've been that clear that Theresa May is now actually doing what Keir had said all along. I love it when people say, I'm being absolutely clear. Because <laughs> you know what's coming. <laughs> um, why do some commentators think that Theresa May will survive this? Because nobody else wants the job. <laughs> it's too miserable. And she has got an incredible skill at just taking the blows. <laughs> <laughs> One of those people, oh, they smash her head in, cut her arms off. She goes, yes, I'm getting on with the job. And I hit her in. Yeah, I'm getting on, walking along here. Doesn't matter, you blow her up, piano falls on her head. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a skill. <laughs> Ian, it, it's, it's what women do. We just get on with it. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> 51% clap. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your last medical? <laughs> <laughs> Can I swap teams? <laughs> According to the Times, <laughs> Theresa May's weakness has united the government. Tories freely admit that they have been more disciplined than they might otherwise have been because Jeremy Corbyn is ahead in the polls. Uh, talking of polls, uh, Theresa May did top one this week. I don't know what that was. A uh, person least likely to be Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best modern Christmas cracker joke. Fantastic. You want to hear the joke? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah? She didn't write it, by the way. No. <laughs> it was written by a bloke called Samuel Williams, and it's this. Yeah. Why was Theresa May sacked as Nativity Manager she couldn't run a stable government. <laughs> no. Well, what, no. Yeah, but what's a nativity manager? That's not a job, is well, it? Well, exactly. <laughs> it, that's where the joke falls down. <laughs> <into> <laughs> bit. I think what Samuel has done is he started with stable government yeah, and tried desperately back. to make it work and then fucked it up. Yeah, which, exactly. <laughs> which I think we've seen before somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see what Theresa May took a fancy to in Maidenhead this week? <laughs> no. It was a sparkly shoe on a Christmas tree. Look at this. Oh, oh yes. There she is. <laughs> Grabbing it. <laughs> uh, while she was browsing, she got stared out by an artificial reindeer. <laughs> Maybe she'd like one of these. <laughs> Jerry Christmas. <laughs> I got a Jeremy Corbyn annual. You got to cut out Jeremy Mask and, you know, and the Fact Finder, Diane Abbott and Theresa May and things like that. It's very interesting. <laughs> a Diane Abbott Fact Finder. <laughs> How many days are there in Christmas? Is it the 12? Or is it 80 billion? <laughs> Jerry Christmas to all. <laughs> Jerry Christmas, Jerry a magical Christmas. bearded old man who all the children believe in.
<laughs> Who makes your dreams come true. Nice. <laughs> anyway, this is <laughs> Theresa May's Commons defeat over the European Withdrawal Bill. David Davis has compared the Cabinet negotiations over Brexit to a game of multi-dimensional chess. And thanks to Damien Green, they're now wondering whether to make a pawn sacrifice. <laughs> According to The Sun, Boris Johnson claimed a £50 billion divorce settlement is not a vast <laughs> sum. <laughs> At which point his wife shrieked with delight and called her lawyer. <laughs> Asked what the requirements of his job in negotiating Brussels are, David Davis said, I don't have to be very clever, I don't have to know that much, I just have to be calm. So why not replace him with a scented candle? <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Angela, take a look at this. Are you a man looking for a telescope, then trusting his own eye? Ah, yes, this is the object that's um, coming into our solar system. It's, it, it looks like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know what those people are. Yeah, it is this thing. It, it's about 400 metres long and 40 metres wide, and it's come from outside of our solar system. We're looking at it to see if it's, got, it's sending out any radio signals. Mm -hmm. They've got a machine that can pick up a signal that's, uh, that's as little as a mobile phone signal. But seeing as people often can't get signals on their mobile phone, how are they going to pick one up from that? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, they're, they're, they're very potentially very excited about it. Mm. Stephen Hawking said it could be the real thing. Yeah. Could, could have aliens in it. It could. I hope there are aliens, because it'd be nice to make a few new friends, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> especially around Christmas time. Yeah, we need one more for badminton next week. Yeah. <laughs> it is exciting news. The first ever object to reach us from outside our solar system mm. might just be an alien spaceship. Yes, mm. wouldn't it be great? Yeah. Apparently, number 10 said it said, take me to your leader, so it went to Belfast. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good job we got you here. Is there anything in your travels? Does it look familiar to you in any sense or shape or form? Have you ever <laughs> seen anything like that before that you can remember? Looks like a giant space jobby. <laughs> the Turdis. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> Close encounters of the turd kind. <laughs> I really want to think of one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding them all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's not healthy. <laughs> um, but uh, it is the wrong shape to be an astronaut. Uh, it an is astronaut. the wrong shape. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is the wrong shape. How did you get through that script? <laughs> <laughs> it's an astronaut doctor, Sonic. <laughs> it's also the wrong shape to be an asteroid. Ah. And researchers have pointed out a cigar or needle shape is the most likely architecture for an interstellar spacecraft since this would minimise friction and damage from interstellar gas and dust. Yeah. Any other tales that it's a spaceship? Any other telltale signs? It's in space. <laughs> <laughs> That's the very thing they're looking for. Very cool. Yes. Got to be clever to do her <laughs> job. <laughs> <laughs> it may also be made of metal. I mean, it might also be made of cheese. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it's very clean. <laughs> House crowd aliens. <laughs> so, someone gone up to it and gone... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was named in Hawaii. Its official name is A2017UI. Do you know what sexier name the scientists have given it? Pretty much anything. <laughs> <laughs> it begins with an O and there's a couple of M's in it. But yes. I don't know how it's pronounced. Oumuamua. Oh, really? Yes. Actually, I'll take it back. <laughs> Oumuamua, which loosely means a messenger that reaches out from the distant past. Mm. Second choice of name was apparently Rhys Mogg. <laughs> um, apparently, Oumuamua doesn't seem to have engines or show signs of propulsion. But mm. Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb cheerfully, yet scarily, explains that away. He said Oumuamua might just be coasting. Perhaps the aliens have a mothership that travels fast and releases baby spacecraft <laughs> that freely fall into planetary systems on a reconnaissance mission. Yes. 
Did he get his degree online? <laughs> um, what is Donald Trump planning to do in space soon? He says he's going to send um, men back to uh, the moon and then from there jump onto Mars. That's yeah. the next thing to do, to go from the moon to Mars. He did. He announced this week he wants to send astronauts back to the moon for the first time since 1972. Mm. He said the goal of the new mission to the moon would include long-term exploration <laughs> and use of its surface. <laughs> he's going to open a golf course, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he does, of course, uh, have a notoriously short attention span, Donald Trump. How did they keep him interested as he signed the directive to send astronauts back to the moon? Bag of Lego. <laughs> Surprisingly close. <laughs> yeah, they gave him a toy astronaut to play with. Look at this. <laughs> Look at his little face! Look at it! You can see him going, to insanity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> that fellow's telling her not to eat it. <laughs> Don't put it in your mouth. Keep it out of your mouth. Dirty boy. <laughs> this is the strange object that recently entered our solar system that some people think <laughs> could be an alien spacecraft. According to the Times, as the craft swings by the Earth, it's travelling at 55 miles per second. The only thing that can stop that is a light dusting of snow. <laughs> <laughs> the object is called Oumuamua and comes from the old Hawaiian phrase for two actors meeting at the ivy. <laughs> oh, Oumuamua. <laughs> <laughs> this week, Donald Trump has announced plans to go to the moon leading half a million angry clangers to sign a petition. <laughs> <laughs> and the Republicans lost a seat in the Senate this week when the voters of Alabama rejected Roy Moore, a right-wing, homophobic, evangelical child molester. <clears throat> He's so vile, even Putin didn't want to help. In America, on CNN, they say alleged child molester, but mm. um, you go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Come that's, and get and me, Roy. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> on to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, teams. I think this is about man flu. Yes. What's been discovered this week? It doesn't exist. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> but it does exist, it and, and, much, men, and yes. men do suffer it worse than they do. do. We? Absolutely, yes. 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 Yeah. Well, There's a tendency to impersonate Mother Teresa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's one of her best looks, but that's... <laughs> this is the news. The phenomenon known as man flu has been proven by science, mm. or at least by one male scientist. <laughs> Dr. Kyle Sue from the Memorial University in Newfoundland says that man flu can be traced back to our caveman days when lying on the couch, not getting out of bed or receiving assistance with activities of daily living <laughs> could also be evolutionary behaviours that protect against predators. <laughs> uh, thank you, wouldn't hurt. Yeah. <laughs> How does Dr. Sue suggest we should respond to these findings? Great to understand it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Perhaps now is the time for male-friendly spaces, equipped with enormous televisions and reclining chairs to be set up. <laughs> He's a doctor, it must be true! <laughs> Where men can recover from the debilitating effects of man flu in safety and comfort. A lot of women would say the world is a male-friendly space. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> why should we take Dr Sue's study with a little pinch of salt? Is he not a proper doctor? He is a proper doctor, and it's a genuine piece of research. But it turns out that the British Medical Journal likes to have a little bit of fun in December. Oh, really? And although the article is based on real findings, the arguments are perhaps a little tongue-in-cheek. With that in mind, who's responsible for destroying the NHS? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy Hunt? No, that is a fact. Oh, yeah. <laughs> According to Dr. Catherine Bell, a GP, it is scourge of the public services, Peppa Pig. Oh, yes, yes. I saw yes. this. What's Peppa been doing wrong? Well, the doctor in Peppa Pig mm. is really nice, 
and gives you 25 minutes and organises tests and doesn't say, I'm short of time. And people have got unrealistic expectations. Yeah, exactly. So they go along expecting there to be a pig, literally, as the yeah. doctor. <laughs> um, well, also, Dr also... Bell has published an article arguing that exposure to Peppa Pig and its portrayal of general practice raises patient expectation and encourages inappropriate use of primary care services. Yeah, yeah but I've seen an episode of Thomas the Tank Engine where Thomas has got a nasty rash and he doesn't go to the doctor and his crankshaft falls off. <laughs> so, who are you going to believe? My, my, my three-year-old watched Peppa Pig and was constantly ringing the doctors asking for an appointment. Do you know what, what's the name? Do you, do you remember the name of the doctor in Peppa Pig? I don't remember Is it Dr Locum? <laughs> <laughs> Dr Brown Bear. But is that a bear? Well, no, no, no it's a drawing. Oh. <laughs> Anyone uses a cucumber for a phone should not be trusted. <laughs> Dr Bell takes issue with Dr Brown Bear's clinically inappropriate home visits. <laughs> <laughs> In Pedro's cough, a three-year-old pony coughs three times while attending playgroup. What does Dr Brown Bear do? He says, you're just a little horse. Thank you. Thank you much. Dr Brown Bear makes an urgent visit to the playgroup in a green light car with sirens. <laughs> what was Dr Brown Bear's response to these allegations? <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, according to the BMG, <laughs> Dr Brown Bear is unable to comment pending the outcome of a fitness to practice <laughs> investigation. <laughs> Criticising the role of Dr Brown Bear in Peppa Pig, the author of the report says, could this depiction be contributing to unrealistic expectations of primary care? Who gives a shit? It just shuts <laughs> the kids up for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Your four are Lembit Opic, the cast of Cats the Musical, the Vienna Chamber Orchestra, and Pharaoh Sam Tick the Third. She's balancing quite nicely on him, isn't she? Thanks, <laughs> 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 I'm thinking cats, because I know that Lembit got bit on the penis by a sausage dog, didn't yes, he? Yes, you're heading in the right direction. <laughs> Did he really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah. You Google the right stuff, you'll find it. <laughs> so that, uh, that's all I've got. Well, it, it, <laughs> everything's about cats except Lembit that's about dogs. Try it the other way around. Everything, as <laughs> I said, <laughs> is about dogs except one of them's about cats. That's right. <laughs> Which one might it be? Ah, uh, it's not important. <laughs> Well, Lembit, then. He's the odd one out. He was bitten by a dog on his penis. I didn't bite him. A dog did. <laughs> no, dogs are the common theme. That's what I said the first time. Cats are the... Cats is the odd one out. No, that's about yeah. cats and the other three about the dogs. Time. Yeah. I've got a headache. No, no, no. Not that. <laughs> it's about cats, but cats isn't the odd one out. Oh. What's happening? Can we go back in time? <laughs> Go back in time, yes. and that might give you a clue to which the odd one out is. The pharaoh. There we go, we got that. <laughs> They've all been interrupted by dogs, apart from Pharaoh Samtik III, who was interrupted by cats. In what was called the Battle of Pelusium in 525 BC, the Egyptian armies were marching out towards the Persians when the invading army deployed their secret weapon. Cats. The Egyptians saw cats as a sacred animal, yeah. were too scared to attack the enemy, and yeah. ended up losing the battle. Fantastic. Not a question you would normally expect in a topical news <laughs> 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 I suppose it's, we've only just translated the hieroglyphics, have we? Yeah. How did a dog upstage the Vienna Chamber Orchestra in a mm. recent performance? It conducted the entire works of Johann Strauss. No, bark, surely. <laughs> <laughs> A little more pedestrian. Let's have a look. <laughs> Lovely. 
Labradors are uh, known attention seekers. Have a look at what one did to try and get on the news in Texas earlier this year. As far as the rest of the area, oh my God, come see. <laughs> look at that dog. <laughs> the same dog on his way to Vienna. <laughs> <laughs> he, he actually looks annoyed like they're filming him. <laughs> According to the Mail, a Broadway performance of Cats was halted when an overexcited dog in the audience broke free from his owner and charged towards Bumble Arena during the opening <laughs> number. <laughs> Tragically, the dog was quickly brought under control and the performance could continue. <laughs> 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 Witnesses described the dog as looking like a cross between a Shih Tzu and a pug before realising that was Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round. We start with man accidentally what in a microwave? Cooked his own dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Man accidentally cements, cements his, his head in a microwave. <laughs> this is the news that a YouTube prankster who cemented his head into a microwave has sadly been rescued. <laughs> <laughs> Next, you can tell someone hates the gift you bought if what? They nail it to your front door. <laughs> <laughs> if they say, oh, that's lovely, you shouldn't have. If they throw you down a well. <laughs> Ian, you're nearly right. You can tell someone hates the gift you bought if they open it and say, thanks, it's lovely. Yeah. Next, what looks like your gran? Her reflection? <laughs> <laughs> a prune? No. You're a gran, aren't you? I am. A new gran. A you gran don't look like a prune. No. It's because I'm not your ordinary gran. I gran? don't think any gran is ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping for a nice Christmas present this year. <laughs> Sepp Blatter. Oh, you're getting close. <laughs> the statue of Maradona looks like your gran. A new statue of the legendary footballer was unveiled this week, but not everyone was impressed with the likeness. Let's have a look. <laughs> and with that, the final scores are Paul and Angela have four, but the winners are Ian and Joe with five. <laughs> Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. The Lords resist reform. <laughs> and I leave you with news that in Northumberland, evidence emerges fame and fortune have not been kind to Billy Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> At the World Swimming Championships in Helsinki, there's another sporting drug scandal as one competitor tests positive for helium. <laughs> and at a secret laboratory in Westminster, the smile lessons continue. <laughs> Good night. BBC Two takes us back into the dark, surreal comedy from Royston Vasey on Monday night. The League of Gentlemen starts at 10. Here on BBC One next, a handsome stranger brings the possibility of romance Mrs Brown's way.